Father, our Lord, we thank you. We come before you, Almighty God, with a thanksgiving, Almighty God, in our hearts. As we pray for this wonderful Sunday that you bless us with, Almighty God. We welcome you, Almighty God, to our presence, Almighty God, in this service of today, Almighty Lord. That, Father, you may guide us, Almighty God. You may be with us, Almighty Father. As we remember, Almighty God, everything that is happening, Almighty God, in our lives, Almighty God. Father, we call upon your name, Almighty God, to intervene, Almighty God. Our nation, Almighty God, we pray that, Father, you may bring rescue, Almighty God, unto us, Father. Even as our reverend is going to bring the word, Almighty God, of truth today, Lord. We call upon your Holy Spirit, Almighty God, to guide him, Almighty God, and, Father, to use him, Almighty God, according to our will, Almighty Father. May your word find a way, Almighty God, in our hearts, Father. That, Father, even as we hear it, Almighty God, it may bring a benefit in our life, Almighty God. That, Father, it may bear fruit, Almighty God, that people may see across, Almighty God. We honor you and we glorify your name, Almighty Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Good morning, brethren. I want to invite you again to uh, today's uh, service. This being the first Sunday of the month of May, we want to thank God for taking care of us. And we want even to bless him for giving us an opportunity to see another month, even as we continue to trust him for good things ahead of us. Today I want to invite us to Psalm 73. And the topic today is from doubt to certainty. Psalm 73 closely relates to the theme of Psalms 37. And this uh, psalm begins the third book of Psalm. Psalm is divided into different sections. And this is one psalm that is uh, known as Levitical, uh, uh, begins a series of psalms called Levitical, Leviticus book. And this kind of psalm mostly dis, uh, 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 discusses the issue of sanctuary. And the psalmist, the psalmist here uh, uh, simply looks at the priori, uh, uh, prosperity of the wicked and their end. He discusses the prosperity of the wicked. How do the wicked people live? How do they eventually end up uh, in their prosperity? I want to just do read uh, the very first verse. And we'll urge all of us, if we can find time, to just run through the entire uh, uh, passage because it's a very exciting psalm. And again, for you to be able to get the idea, uh, the theme behind it, you can also uh, read it alongside Psalm 37. And this is what the psalmist writes. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of clean Heart. This psalm, just like the writing then, in the biblical times, most writing ended up with con the conclusion. And like our times where we write and then ends with the conclusion, before then they used to begin with the conclusion. And the psalmist, after writing all what he wanted to communicate to his people, he begins he first begins by introducing what he concludes as the matter of the whole issue that he presents. And this is his conclusion, that truly God is good to Israel. After this conclusion, he begins by wondering in verse 2, why in this life and in this world, evil men seem to prosper, while godly men are often in a serious distress and need. And this happened when the psalmist decided to remove his eyes from God and the way he operates and looked at the prosperity and the buoyance of the wicked. He couldn't understand why God allowed the wicked to prosper. And this almost made him to, you know, turn aside from the path of the Godward trust and to stagger through the sudden pool of unbelief. And one thing that we learn from this experience is that godly Christians, people who believe in God and they have God as their master, 
At times, they doubt God and they question how God goes about his business. Friends, many at times as Christians, we challenge God. When we look at life, we cannot be able to understand how things are. Just like some is, there are issues in life which causes doubt and uncertainty. We occasionally find ourselves doubting God. We ask questions like, God, don't you care that we are perishing? Why all this pain, God? Why are things not working for me? God, until when? At times we even tell God, God, this is not fair. And we find people like Moses, David, and Jesus who go to that such a point in their lives. And this is common even in our times. At times we get to a point where we want God to change his way of operation, to, for God to change and try to manage our affairs because he's sovereign and in charge of our affairs. But today I want to submit something to all of us. That in our Christian life, for us to be able to deal with doubt in life, we should have what I'm calling a solid foundational truth upon which we can stand when everything else seems to be falling. This will come in handy, in handy when we begin to doubt God, when things don't seem to work the way we want them to work, when things don't seem to make sense. If we have a solid foundation on which we can put our trust, on which we can have our, our, our strength, we will be able to move and we will be able to go and maneuver well in life. According to this passage today, we learn that one of the basic foundational truths that every single Christian need and require is what we find in this psalm. Truly, God is good. That is one foundational truth that if we hold on, then nothing will make us to doubt how God is functioning and even when things don't seem to work our way, we can still continue to applaud. We can continue to hang on there and present to the world that God is good. And that's why it is common nowadays to have greetings that mention God as good. And we keep, you know, responding to these greetings by God is good all the time. And that is in nature. Three times, the psalmist present God as good. In fact, in the original uh, writing, he said that nothing is good but God to Israel. Because to him, he had confirmed that despite the prosperity of the wicked, despite the challenges that he, fe he faced in life, despite the things working the way they were working, he realized that God remains good in every situation. I want to encourage us that even as we face challenges in life, because we know that we are facing challenges, someone might be going through a prolonged and painful illness, and he has been seeking from God to intervene in his sickness. Probably your children have rebelled. You may, not, uh, you may be unable to meet your financial obligations. Someone is jobless. Your marriage might be in the, in the bleak of breaking. I want to submit to us that God is still good even in that situation. It may not make sense at the moment. Because at times we may not be, be able to really understand how a good God, a loving God, can, be, can allow things to work the way they are working. Circumstances may dictate otherwise. But I want to remind all of us that does not, that does not change the nature of God. He remains good. And this is very key. That you may not understand what is happening around you. You may be going through challenges. But one thing that I want to help you understand is that when you cannot understand what is happening around you, when I cannot understand what is happening to me, then I'm going to fall back to what I understand. 
because the biggest mistake we do is to continue concentrating on the things that we cannot define or understand. But one thing that we all understand, if you are a believer, if you believe there is a God, then one thing that we have chosen to hang on to is that God is good. And with this, we are not going to be overwhelmed by circumstances. We are going to choose to hang on to this God. We are going to shine even in difficult times. We are going to allow this God to control our affairs and to take courage because the God that we trust in, the God who is our creator, who has a track record, remains to be good. So may you be encouraged in the course of this month. Even as things go the way they are going, even as we are unable to understand and define things the way they are, may we continue to hold on to this God who is good to Israel, even to such as are of clean, Heart. Shall we pray together? Lord, we thank you because you are good. And the reason why we are alive today and can be able to continue holding on even when life dictates and the situations dictates otherwise, we still believe you are good. Those who are there before us alluded to this fact. And we are going to continue waiting upon this good God who understand everything because the universe and every single creation is in his hands. And so we want to continue waiting upon you. We pray that, Lord, you are going to attend to our needs because a good God attends to the needs of his people. And he is faithful and remains so because from eternity to eternity, you are the only God that holds everything together. And so we want to pray that this month will be your month you are going to take charge of every situation and we are going to hold on to the fact that God is good all the time because that is his nature. In Jesus' name we pray.